Hey, welcome in everybody to the next edition of the Bell Take as we're here with Alex as we're going to talk about the Phillies and we're going to talk about maybe the first mistake that the very good manager this far, I love the quotes he said and everything he said this far, Rob Thompson, has made last night plus much more. But first and foremost, how you doing, man? I'm good. I'm doing well. Yeah. Uh, so last night, what did you – we found out F1 was a little dinged up, so obviously that's why he came out. But would you have put Familia in or would you have went a different direction there? Because I think most of Philadelphia would go with the latter and say they would have went a different direction <laughs> with anybody else but Yuri's Familia. Um, yeah. I would definitely put in um, uh, maybe Nick Nelson. Uh, if if that was the case, um, I know that Nick Nelson struggles, but but it wouldn't hurt for him to have have the chance to to do what he does, and I think that Pamela is a bad rotation guy uh, in the uh, bullpen, and. I'm I'm not sure that it was the right move by Rob Thompson to to make that move and have the ability to try to get the save. Yeah, I think you're spot on there because I think uh, Nelson also the beauty of him is when he is on his game, he goes two innings usually. So if he was say really spot on yesterday, then you save another reliever because he could have pitched into the second inning. So then you kill two birds and one stone. I also think. Bellotti could have pitched earlier in this game. He's actually pitched pretty well throughout this season. You could have probably threw him in there earlier where Yuri's familiar has been struggling. Andrew Bellotti hasn't. So it kind of – it was odd where we went, and also Brogdon was warming up earlier in the game and then never got used, which was the most peculiar thing for me out of everything. So, like, he would have been the most logical to honestly – Use, but I think Nelson, I, I actually really have been impressed with Nelson, and it sounds like you have too, because of all the guys we signed, a lot of them got injured, like Moss and Ryan Sheriff, and all those guys got injured in spring training. But of all the guys we signed, he was the guy that people talked about for having, oh, I can't, he can't harness his control the best. His control is a big issue. Where he's actually hasn't been that, like he had some walk issues, but it hasn't been anything to the paramount issues of his past. So if he can stay how he's pitching this year, he's going to be a good like middle reliever innings eater and he's probably going to get more shining moments just by default if a guy like Yuri's Familia continues to struggle a guy that before we go into the next topic I think Mark Appel honestly if Familia continues to suck or uh, like Norwood's been bad obviously too I think Appel with how good he's pitching he's not the sexiest name he's taken a while to bloom he left baseball and came back but he would make sense to call up for me because he's kicking behind in triple a so you might as well give him a shot if all else fails up here because if the worst comes to worst, you're just going to send him back down. But when it comes to going into the lineup, somebody we have to talk about is Reese Hoskins. I'm sure, uh, first and foremost, what's your overall feel on Reese Hoskins? Like, are you one of those people that's big Reese Hoskins fan or are you one that gets annoyed by his high highs and low lows? Like, what, what's your feel in general on Reese Hoskins and, two, how impressed have you been with him lately? Um. Yeah, I think that he's he's finally getting the peak of his uh, career where he's getting what what he has been doing, which is getting the ball um, in play. And it was it's been very helpful the past couple of games because I think the Phillies are struggling offensively with getting the bat on the ball sometimes. And I think Reese Hoskins has been uh, awesome with with getting the ball on the bat and driving in runs and getting what he has been doing, which, which is hitting home runs. And I think that like in the long picture, um, I think having Bryce Harper in the lineup with him will definitely uh, put put on a great picture with everything that has been happening in the past. Yeah. 
I agree with that. I also think Kyle Schwarber's month of June has been huge because he's always been, for whatever reason, that weird month stat that really doesn't have any pertinence to it, but usually comes true for some players are great in certain months for whatever reason. Schwarber's tend to be June. Uh, I feel like that's really helped them out. The guy that's honestly been holding the lineup back lately, as well as the fielding, is Castellanos. Because Castellanos is not a good fielder, and if he doesn't hit well enough, he doesn't counterbalance the fact that because of Harper's injury, he has to be in the field. And, like, yesterday, Bryce Harper would have caught that line drive. Like, there's no chance that line drive was getting past Bryce Harper that Nick Castellanos had no chance to catch. So I think that's, like, a little bit of a difference there. Uh, but – I believe, like, I agree with you. I think Hoskins turned in the right direction. I think Swarber started turning in the right direction. JT, I'm a little concerned about. Um, and I, Cassiano's I'm not concerned about because he has valleys. So, like, he's probably going to go back up. But JT is somebody I would kind of put on the concerned list at this point. What do you think about Abdubal? Well, I don't even like Abdubal, so I'm fine. If uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if Abdubal... I've tried to forget, like I've forgiven Odubel, I guess, but at the same time I haven't. So it's kind of like a two, it's like a, sure, you're starting to hit for us, but I'm not going to forgive you just because you're doing good for my baseball team. So it's like, and also he's not a good fielder. So like, I don't think Odubel fits into the outfield right now, which is why I think Rob Thompson turned Matt Veerling all of a sudden into Ben Zobris and he's playing second, third and the outfield in a matter of like seven days. But I think that's because he's trying to give him the confidence that Chuck, and I'm not saying Veerling's going to be Jason Worth, don't get me wrong, but that Chuck gave Jason Worth when he said, you're just playing. I don't care if you're facing a righty or lefty. We're going to put you out there so you know you're out there. You stay work through your kinks and let's move on. I think that's kind of what Rob's doing with Veerling because he knows he's obviously his best fielding option because Odubel playing-wise on top of issues away from the game, he's also – Fallen fielding. Like it doesn't really make sense that you started your career as being a gold glove caliber fielder and now are bad at track backtracking and doing certain things. And sometimes you're like his ball reading skills have got worse, which is usually not what happens. So I feel like his hitting's fine, but he kind of strikes me in the same realm of all the other outfielders you have. You have Schwarber, you have Cassianos, and you have him, all of them are better at hitting than fielding. So I feel like Veerling's their best bet if he can continue to hit. And then me and Shane Mead, who I used to do a podcast with, I had him on the other day from always next year. If Moniak can hit, he would be a, the second best. He would be the best platoon option with Veerlin because he's probably the best fielder of them all, but his hitting hasn't caught up to the major leagues yet. So that's something that we have to see if that transpires over time. Yeah, I definitely agree with you. But when it comes to our overall uh, team, I would say something that I've been very impressed with this year on top of Wheeler since he's got healthy coming on strong. Aaron Nola, if you look at whip, I think he leads the league in whip. He leads the league in some of the really important categories that people look at to vote for the sigh at the end of the year. So I feel like as much as we pep up Wheeler, Nola likes kind of being that dark horse under talked about guy. So yeah, you don't want to talk about it too much, but like he deserves to be talked about a little bit with how good he's doing. Gibby started off really good, Kyle Gibson, and then kind of went down the off path for a little bit. But I believe both of those guys kind of got it going right. And um, Nola and Wheeler at the top of the rotation with how strong Nola is this year, that's as good as anybody's top two. And then if Gibson even pitches to a 3-7, that's very helpful if, if uh, Eflin can pitch. That's really helpful. So I think all of our starters combined and then Suarez being able to get better and go deeper into games. I feel like we have a good combination rotation that has a great top two and then everybody else just kind of falls into place nicely uh, below with a couple guys in the minors too that are not too far away. So. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I got a FaceTime. Call. No, you're good. Uh, but, but I don't know. I guess my uh, my second to uh, last question I would have is out of pitching, we'll go with reliever and bullpen because last we're finished with hitters and we'll go with infield and outfield. But out of pitching, who's the guy out of the bullpen that's impressed you the most this far? Because I know off of the bat who mine is. And who's the guy out of the rotation that's impressed you the most this far? Um, 
I would say uh, not really positive about it, but I think so. Anthony Dominguez has been doing <laughs> has been doing pretty decent. I agree. Um, yeah, that's a good one. And but that he has been off and on. Um, I think that him and Familia has been like the two most definitely uh, like like if you put a list of which one to go and which one to not go, I would put them two on the not not go list and just have Dominguez and Bethetti on the go list and and try what and see what happens. Yeah, do you mean go like get rid of Dominguez and Bellotti or put them on the like play them more? Like, yeah, play them more. Yeah. Okay, that's what I figured you meant by go. Yeah. Um, because I, I think honestly, Norwood's another guy. I don't I, I think they might I don't think they did set the damn thing though. But if he's not down yet, he should be set down because he's been struggling. He started the season good and I liked what I saw and then he struggled. Bellotti is a guy that's a fun story too, because he um well not a fun story, but a warrior story, I should say because he battled back from actually having to go to jail because of a car accident and then mm-hmm. ended up coming back into baseball, worked his way all the way back to the majors, and now looks like a very solid relief pitcher for a potential, well, I would say, wild card contending team. I don't see us winning the division, uh, but for a potential playoff contending team. So I, I, I'm very impressed with what he's shown. I, I'm kind of going with the guy you said earlier to talk about who you would have put in the game over Familia when it comes to the bullpen. I've been impressed because of how I said these harnesses control the most of the season with the guy you mentioned earlier, Nick Nelson. I've liked how I've seen him just be able to – because if you're a long reliever, for me, if you have a 4-4 or a 4-5 and you've pitched 85 innings at the end of the season and you pitch a lot of them pretty damn good, I'm fine with that because you were the guy that when I needed you to eat innings, pitched me two innings at a time. I know that's an old school thought, but – call me old school then like I'm fine with that because you you, you pitched yeah. me 90 innings out of the pen and gave me good enough baseball you kept me in the game and you gave me innings and we have a freaking bombastic offense so and now that Matty V's starting to hit that's just gonna help even more so uh he's kind of the guy I will go that you mentioned earlier but I I'm full-heartedly in agreement with you on Bellotti and Dominguez because I would say those three are the three I've been the most impressed with Dominguez we knew would be good again but we I don't think we knew it would be this instant because of the injuries he was coming off of but most of us did have confidence in the rotation who would be your guy um I would definitely are uh, you mean in the starting rotation yeah in the starting rotation yeah um I would have to go with um Zach Wheeler okay that makes sense yeah He's yeah, he, he's definitely been a a little better than Noda uh, these past couple of games, and I feel like his mechanics and everything that he has been showing has been uh, amazing stuff, and I think that Aaron Noda is is having a tough time trying to get pitch locations well. And Zach Widow seems to be doing a little better than him. Yeah, I think he is. I think you're right on that. I think glove aiming, Wheeler's been more of the dot. I think Nola, though, which is why I would pick him as my impress guy, is he hasn't been on the dots yet like Wheeler has, and he's already pitched this well. So, like, once he actually doesn't just t- have to use his take advantage or, so to speak, get, if you want to say, get lucky because of his movement, whatever way you want to phrase it, he's going to be even better because he's actually going to be more pinpointed in each start. So I agree that like Nola goes one start being very pinpointed, and then he goes another start where he battles through six, but still only gives up two and pitches really well. So, but the fact that he's able to still get back to being the battle where last year you didn't see the battle bone Nola as much this year, you're starting to see that again. So I think that's huge for the team when it comes to the lineup. The guy I have to go with uh, on the outfield as we're uh, wrapping this one up in the final couple of minutes is Matty V. Because Matty V, Matt Vierling, since Rob Thompson's come in, seems to be kind of getting his game going back. I don't think he's ever going to be as hot as he was last year. And hit three. He's not going to hit 315. But if he hits 260 or something and feels really well, that's nice because he's a very good fielder, has a good arm. 
Uh, and that's what you need in the center field when you have Schwarber and Castellanos in the corner. So I think he's the guy that's impressed me the most when it comes to the outfielders. I don't know if you had anybody that would uh, be the guy or if you would just think it's also Veerling or what your take is on that. Uh, I definitely like Kyle Schwarber. Uh, he's been doing uh, great in the outfield and he's been a huge help the past couple of days, especially like, uh, especially next week, they, they have to go out to San Diego. And I think that it'll be very crucial to, to have him being as sharp as he can in the outfield because there's going to be a lot of line drives head to him. I feel like because the Padres have a very good hitting team and and they can blast, blast the ball well. And Kyrie Schroeder is definitely the one that you want to help to increase the, to decrease the scoring abilities for yeah. the. Yeah, I do think Schwarber fits into the category of he's just not fast in the outfield, but he's actually not a bad fielder. He just can't get to much. Where Castellanos is not a good fielder. So mm-hmm. it's kind of different. Like, Cassianos is faster than Schwarber, but can't get to as many balls as Schwarber because of his reads, where Schwarber's slower, but also well, might have not even got close to that line drive like Cassianos did to miss it like as weird as he did yesterday because he's not as quick. So there's kind of a take or break on both. But um, I think to wrap us up, the infield, the guy I'm going with, because I've been impressed with him since Rob's come on and even since Joe's let him play more, I think Bohm's starting to regain his confidence a bit. So I feel like if that's just very plentiful and helpful for the Phillies, if that happens. So I feel like that's a key guy for me. I don't know if you had another guy for the infield. Uh, yeah. The one, the one individual that came to my mind was uh, Bohm. He's definitely doing a great job defensively. He's getting very athletic uh, plays to get get his momentum back and and I I really like how how the ball placement he gets there in time and he he doesn't stop and he just tries to throw him out of who, whoever the battle is and oh yeah and I just I just feel like he's a great great infielder uh Knowing that Segura is on the injured list, and it's it's a little harder for the infield to get get going with him out, but I think Boom is definitely a solid infielder, and I think he's going to grow into a a big asset for this team. Yeah, I think so too. I'm fully in agreement on that. But uh, Alex, I definitely want to have you on soon again to talk about either the Sixers because you have that fat Sixers flag behind you. So we'll definitely have you on for that. Uh, the Flyers, um, whatever, because you do great work for uh, Flyers and Andy Gritty that I also do stuff with Jamie. So, uh, of course, we both know Jamie, the wonderful Jamie Vascal. Uh, I hope to have him on in his busy schedule, which is the most busiest schedule I've ever seen in the history of mankind. <laughs> but thank you for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. This has been the latest edition of Bell Take. A special thanks to Alex. Um, you can follow us here at Sports Tonight News. Please do hit that scrub, subscribe button, Jesus, if I can speak English, down below to keep the channel growing to the goal of 260 or more by the start of July. We really appreciate your love and support. Stay safe out there, everybody, and enjoy your day.